guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book review of Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. It's not Crescent City, it's House of Earth and Blood, but Crescent City is the name of the series and it's House of Earth and Blood is just too long, so I'm just going to call it Crescent City for today. Hope you don't mind. I read this about a month ago and I obviously talked about it in my wrap up and I had no intentions of doing a review but this book has just sat on my mind this entire month i've wanted to reread it so many times since i read it and i just felt like i had to come and talk to you about all my thoughts and opinions because they've just been crowding in my mind i have no one to tell them to and so a video is necessary this entire review will be spoiler free i'm just going to discuss my thoughts and opinions and generic things but we do have a lot of pages of notes at the same time so it might be a long one, I'm going to keep it as short as I can, but we have a lot to discuss today. Firstly, the cover. Isn't that stunning? This is just the general edition, I don't think this is any like Waterstones edition or anything like that, it's just standard and it's just stunning. There's inside art, oh my goodness, this entire book fills me with happiness. This story follows Bryce Quinlan, who is half fae, half human, in the world of Crescent City, which we will discuss very shortly, the world building, because it is an essential part of the story. Her best friend dies while she's out partying one night and she returns to the crime of the scene. Scene, not the crime of the scene. She returns to the, oh my God. She returns to the scene of the crime. The book flashes forward to two years later where we follow Bryce and she has been picked to uncover the the mystery behind the murder of her best friend. That is it. It doesn't really give you much of a synopsis at all. It says that she was assigned to someone called Hunt Athala, uh, who was a fallen angel, enslaved to help her with the mystery. I had read the synopsis before I got the book, but I had forgotten about it. So when I picked up the book, I forgot about the murder part, which I think was great to go into. So maybe if you're going to read this, try and forget about that detail. <laughs> I know I just told you, but like, I can't not tell you what the book is about in a book review, but that would be my suggestion. The amazing thing about this story is obviously what I just told you, it is a fantasy, but it is also a thriller, a mystery, a romance. There is so much to this book that people of any genre will probably enjoy it as long as you enjoy a couple of those four, which most people do. It's fantasy but an easy fantasy in my eyes i struggle with high fantasy and i didn't struggle with this at all it was so so good my favorite thing about this story was the world building so i don't know if it ever mentions this or anyone else has said this to put this in my brain but in my mind it was new york city inspired now i don't know if i've read that somewhere or if i've just come up with that but <clears throat> it basically has sky ride sky rise buildings and clubs there's still technology there's still phones there's still te tvs you still watch the weather on the tv just like we do in this world <clears throat> but at the same time there are werewolves fey demons angels and they take they are taken over the world and humans have become the lowest of the low so it's a world that you can relate to with the technology and the build it's basically earth it is it's basically earth but but it is Earth, but given this fantastical flair. And that was just everything to me because it was so relatable while being so magical and different. It's also not something I've read much of. I've read about fantastical lands based on Earth, so like the Cruel Prince series, but I've never really read about a fantasy world that is Earth. I know that some something like the city that we became is very much urban fantasy like that but I've not read it. So this was something very new for me, something I hadn't really experienced before and was very unique to me. And I really, really loved that aspect of it. Now, obviously a lot of people's major complaint with this book is the info dumping at the beginning. And this has a lot to do with the world that we are based in in this story. The info dumping <laughs> is about the first 200 pages of the book, which yes, is a lot, 150 maybe, is a lot. But I would say while you're reading it, it doesn't feel that info dumpy. While I was reading it, I was kind of bored and didn't really enjoy it. It was very confusing. I really didn't pay much attention. I don't remember what happened or what was told to me because of how slow it was, but it didn't feel info dumpy until I got to the actual story 
part and that's when I realized that that was info dumping because of how different the story became how different the writing became it was all just completely different it was like I'm reading another book but I will say that in order to have the depth of this new series that we're going to have of course there was going to be some info dumping I do not agree that there had to be 150 pages of it there did not have to be but I do feel that upon reread this will be such good information to digest and it will really change the way you feel about the book to read that info dumping again knowing the knowledge you have of this book and I'm really excited to do that because I feel like I'm going to get a lot more from it which might have been her intention knowing okay it may not be great but it'll always give you something more when you read it but I do agree it was too much info dumping I think the book could have been shorter <laughs> while having info dumpy moments maybe but it was too much all at once but it did mean that the rest of the book had none it was just fast paced as soon as you got through that sludge but the issue was getting through the sludge you know it didn't affect my rating I still gave this book a five stars I should probably say I still adored it it was one of my favorite books of the year but I can admit there was way too much info dumping but it wasn't as bad as some books I have read so alongside the world being one of my favorite things about this book it was also the characters Oh my goodness, the characters are incredible. And I don't just mean the main character or the two mainish protagonists. I mean every character in this book, from the people you hate, from just the side characters, the people you love, to the main two. I just adored it. So the story follows Bryce Quinlan's POV plus Hunt Athalar's POV, which is the fallen angel who is um, enslaved, has to join her on her uh, quest. Quest? To discover the murder of her best friend Danica. Now, already so much emotion was brought into the book straight away with the murder of her best friend and love interest. It, it was it was a lot of emotion already, even though the synopsis tells you I didn't know. And so I had so much more emotion and shock already, so so fast in the book that I didn't realize how much was going to come of that even more there was going to be so much more so you follow Bryce and I have some complaints with Bryce she's a very relatable character she's very broken um, but she betrays such a strong hard front to herself she always appears to be in such control of the situations that she's in and you always see her taking charge and always handling everything thrown at her but then you see her in her personal at-home life when she is processing the information of what's just happened and you can see that it actually affects her more than we first thought and things aren't as easy as they're portrayed to be for her it gets to the point where even the menial things are a problem for her and that is so relatable for a lot of us in these problems you know it's got a lot of depression a lot it has trigger warnings for suicide um it's it's very deep and you see so many layers to her and it was nice seeing such fragile characters, but I do come on to a couple of complaints later on. The other POV that we follow now and again is Hunt Athalar's POV. He is the fallen angel who has been slaved for many, enslaved for many, many years and has to pay off his debt. He's kind of the opposite of Bryce. He is very strong and th there's no backstory to it. In my opinion, he is just a strong character despite having gone through so much in his past. And he, we kind of see a little bit of his past, but we don't see everything. And I'm really hoping that in future books we're going to see some more of what happened to him and all that because I feel like there's a lot more than there that needs to be uncovered. He has a lot of walls around him and it was very hard to get to know him as a character because of these walls but it was also fascinating to watch them slowly disintegrate and finding more about his personality maybe not so much about his history but his personality for sure and seeing what really matters to him he was such a lovable character. He was so serious. But I loved him. I just, he, entra he entranced me with everything. Everything he did, I was like, wow. Even the bits where I didn't agree with what he did or I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but you know, certain things I was like, I hate you, I hate you, but I love you, but I love you so much. I just couldn't cope. The emotions he brings, and Bryce, to be honest, they bring so much emotion into this story that the characters are probably on par with the wheel building for me it was just so so good but not only do we have these main two characters with the depth that they had but we also have side characters and lots and lots of them 
and none of them are 2D characters. Absolutely none. These characters come with so much depth, emotion, love, like you feel for every single one of these people. The ones you hate, you still, you hate them so much. Like an author to be able, able to bring this much love and passion or hatred to a character has done something right. And for me, I, I couldn't fault it. I was amazed. The whole experience of reading side characters for me is usually very meh. I don't care if they're there or if they're not. But this book, I just, I love them all so much. The only thing I worry about with these side characters is even though they've been brought so much depth and development, I worry she won't bring more in the next books. I want to see it constantly evolving. I want to see them becoming better. I want to see more side characters come in. I want to see them be part of the story. Um, which they were in the first one, I just want it to continue because a lot of the time when you have good side characters they can just drop off in a series and that really really grates me so I'm hoping that will continue. My one problem with the characters, and it's quite a big problem, is that they all seem too perfect. Every character, not not like the things they do because they're not perfect in any way, but physically every character is written as though they are perfect. They've all got these amazing bodies and they dress in these magnificent outfits and they all look so good and they're dressed to the nines and the whole time I was just like oh we can have someone who we don't have to describe their body type to me like just just a little complaint it was just a little bit frustrating I would like some more realistic characters in terms of looks in that regards like obviously in terms of personality there was a lot of flaws which was great but I would like to see that in their appearance as well I have heard that that's quite a usual complaint with Sarah J Mass's books, but this is the first time that I've ever read anything from Sarah J Mass, so I don't know how true that is. I can only speak on my experience with this book, but it's very frustrating to read that, and I do hope that in the next book she, maybe she changes that, but if that's her usual books, if that's a usual thing in her books, then probably not. I did have a couple of letdowns with this book. Obviously they weren't that dramatic if I still gave it a five star, but I did, and the one was the casualness of the drug use. Now obviously, the, as part of the story, there is one drug that is obviously reprimanded and that one's discussed on how bad it is. But in terms of the regular drug use, you open the book to her going out and using a lot of drugs, and a lot of serious hardcore drugs as well. And it's almost glorified. The negatives are kind of discussed, but not really. And I'm like sitting there thinking to myself, you you've kind of just glorified the use of these drugs to me and made it sound like a really great time and I didn't love that because although these books are not really targeted towards a young audience at all definitely not you don't know who's reading your books and who is susceptible to reading these things and I would have just loved to have seen the consequences be pushed more towards because of the drugs maybe or some in terms of when they were just doing casual drug use I'd have liked to have seen more problems with that because there wasn't really any consequences for using these drugs and I just personally didn't like that and I worry about who would be reading these kind of things and how it could affect certain people. That was my like serious letdown but I also had the letdown with the smut aspect and you're all probably thinking hang on Sarah J Mass is amazing at smut how can you be let down? Because as I said it's my first Sarah J Mass but what I have heard from this from everybody is that she writes the best smut. And so I went into this thinking, oh, 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 I'm going to get some smut in this, which is what I was looking forward to. I'm not going to lie to you. Where? Where was it? We had one good scene and then we had one mediocre scene. And I was like, eh. is that it? Is that it? Are you all telling me from the smut queen that that's all I got? Either you're all overhyping this or this book just wasn't the one for smut and I need to move on. I've heard a lot about Akamath and Akawa in terms of smut so maybe I'll have to try them instead but I was disappointed in that regard. That was not okay. Nobody should have told me what to expect when I wasn't gonna get it. Maybe everyone's like hang on bro did you not read those scenes like they were good scenes. I'm like mm, they're fine. I don't think they were that good. I've read better to be honest from people who aren't glorified to smut. So we'll see on her future books how I feel about those, but it was very disappointing for me to go in expecting such heaven and was not getting it. Then the probably the most important part of this entire book was the last 300 pages, which sounds like so much because that's like the size of a regular book, 300 pages. This book, it felt like nothing. Oh, 
it was so much the emotion in those last 300 pages i didn't stop crying if you've seen my august wrap up you will have seen how some pictures of how much i cried during this read i sobbed i sobbed it was up down all over town i could not stop you don't the story doesn't pause for a second you are thrown twist after turn and revelation after revelation it doesn't end and i didn't have a chance to breathe i was kind of like hang on hang on hang on we've just found this out can we not can we not do any more there was such there were so many suspenseful scenes that were so drawn out it almost killed me but in the best way it was so long and i was like oh my goodness i'm i need this to end because i'm going to throw up my anxiety is so much right now for this character or this character and all i'll say is she really didn't mind making you hurt and i mean hurt i have never felt so sore i never want to feel so much emotion from a book again because i don't think i can handle it i it was painful it was really really painful oh, thinking about it now just thinking about it i just can't cope no no emotional emotional that was my in-depth-ish review of the crescent city i have a lot more thoughts but i also don't want this video to be an hour long so i'm just gonna leave it there hopefully post editing me will be able to like cut some of this out and make it actual coherentness 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 actually coherent because i've just sat here and gushed for way too long i really enjoyed this book i do see the problems with it even though it is one of my favorite books now i do see the problems with it and i hope that i address some of those problems i'm sure i've missed a couple that other people have had but overall this book was incredible and i definitely recommend picking it up even if you're not a sarah j mass fan because neither am i i've never have been well now i am but i never have been and so i would definitely recommend this please and let me know if you do pick it up what you think or if you have picked it up before please let me know your thoughts do you agree with me disagree with me i would love to talk to you down in the comments about it because i need somebody to talk to about this book i loved it <laughs> uh thank you so much for watching this video and if you made it this far thank you so much i shall see you in the next video bye